Victoria, you sing so beautifully. You know, it reminds me of um, one of the Lennon sisters, I think Peggy of the Lennon, right? Right, right. I, I've been told that before. You're kind of the same breed of cat, that mm -hmm. wonderful, classy, uh, uh, refined lady. Thank you. And would you like to be a Lennon sister? We could arrange I it. I don't have any sisters, so I guess I have to oh. go it alone. <laughs> no, but one of them got sick, you could fill oh, in. Oh, I, no. I see. Our next guest plays the suave and sophisticated Victor Newman. Now, he's a guy who rules Genoa City with an iron fist. But recently on the show, if you're watching, we found that even the most powerful man in town needs to be loved. It's universal. Don't go. Victor, really a softy under that mean exterior. Welcome the actor who plays him, Eric Braden. Before you came out, I said to Victoria and I said to Steve, do, when do you work with Eric? And they said that all these storylines are like, it's like the book Hawaii with all the different families that are separate and then they get together one. You're all different storylines. We see each other passing between the bathroom and the commissary. <laughs> That's right. That's all it is, eating and going to the bathroom and going That's back. That's exactly what it is. Well, but isn't that too bad that you can't work together on the show? It's all separate. I, I bet you the time will come. Uh, you're yes. probably right. Yeah. <clears throat> Victor Newman is spreading his tentacles all over the place. Yes. Yes. You, his tentacles. Are you, you, uh, you uh, Victor is suave, sophisticated. You're a flirt on the show. Uh, are you anything like that? Am I? A yes. flirt? Oh. oh. <laughs> you said that you never work with him. You just pass him on the way to the bathroom and the commissary. How would we flirt on the show? On the way, yes, yes. <laughs> I think flirting is one of the most wonderful and delightful habits, I think. Yes. I grew up in Europe. And I think it makes a day. I mean, to see a pretty lady, to exchange whatever one exchanges when one looks at each other, is wonderful. Yes. Nothing necessarily has to come of it, yes. but I think it's one of the most delightful habits. And it's one thing that I used to miss in America. I think American women have become much more relaxed about that in the last few years, I think. I, I think that has changed. Ladies, are you changing that? Yes. Are you getting better at it or just doing it more? Or you don't really give a damn anymore and just whatever comes up. <laughs> I think you're doing it more, aren't you? Women are more open. I, I agree with what you're saying. I came here at 59, and I remember then when you sat some in a cafe or whatever, and you flirted. Yes. A woman would invariably sort of look away immediately, shyly away. She was absolutely shocked by that. Yeah. Nowadays, she things says, have loosened up considerably. Yeah, can I drive you home? <laughs> yeah. That may be the case, yes. Is there anything you'd like to change about your character? He's suave, he's sophisticated, he has a way with women. What don't you like about him? I think the fact that he buys, in his relationship with Nikki, for example, he buys a lot of gifts. And I think, personally, I think that is a rather despicable habit. I think that is... Does not it work for him? It works for him as a character in this yeah. particular show, it does. I personally disagree with that. I don't think that one bases a relationship with a woman on the amount of gifts you buy her. I think you're in trouble when you do that. Well, sure. But, I mean, that's... Everybody has faults on soap operas. It's based on weaknesses and faults and... Right? He, uses, he uses money. I mean, he absolutely yeah. uses it. Yeah, a lot of men do, though, and so you're representing that on the show, right? That's right. You're saying that in real life you never buy anything for your wife. Now, you're happily married, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You... you was there a wedding gift? Was there, does she wear a ring? She wears a ring. A there biggie? Was a, there was a, not a biggie, no. No, I don't like anything that ostentatious and that. I see. I mean, I, I think there's a, in other words, there's certain men, I think when you're married, of course, then you exchange gifts. But I think when you, when you court a woman, I think the buying of gifts, of expensive gifts, has a touch of vulgarity about it. And I think that it has a touch of a loser about it, I think. Mm-hmm. Is that you, a European point of view, or a, now you have a German background and your wife is American, right? Yes. Is that, does she agree with that? Is there a culture clash there? Not in regard to that. I think there are certain cultural clashes between Europeans and Americans. I think in many senses, obviously, they are alike. But as far as, for example, raising a child is concerned, I think there's a difference. 
I think that Europeans and Germans in particular are a little bit more disciplined with their children, a little more insisting on disciplined behavior. How do you mean? Be, be more specific. Because you see kids when you travel to Europe who... who I've seen European kids on buses and things who seem just as loud as, as American kids. Really? Yeah, really. I think... And I, I was think looking for the opposite. When have you been there? Recently, you mean? Yeah, a month ago, two months ago. I left 20 years ago, so that... <laughs> <laughs> I think, it has I think for, for example, if you, have, if you have friends, if you have friends of my boy who come to visit him at home, yes. you will... They will often come in and sort of barely give you... Hi. I mean, how nebulous, how absolutely abbreviated can a greeting be between two people? Just a hi. Well, but you're a, you're a very stern, severe... You're, you're a very serious man. They might be afraid of you. Not in the least. No, I see, I see it happen all the time. So I make them go outside of the door. They have to knock at the door. They have to come in. They have to say hello to my wife. Then they have to shake my hand and have to ask us how we are. And then they may proceed to play with the sun. I mean, this coming in and turning on the TV or going to the refrigerator and taking over the house, I mean, I simply will not have that. That's unnerving. You don't agree? <laughs> I agree, I guess, but I mean, that, that's kids. I mean, adults are out of it, so they're not going to say, hey, how you doing? No, How's I think, business? How's I think, the car? No, I think there's more to it than that. I think yeah. there is, for oh, example, exactly. for example the lack of shaking hands in America. I think the shaking hands in Europe is a wonderful habit. In other words, you recognize another human being, you look them in the eye, there's a physical exchange between mm. human beings, instead of this non-physical, hi. How are you? I mean, it's dreadful. I find it absolutely horrible. There's something very nice and very pleasant about shaking hands, looking someone in the eye. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. You don't agree? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I shake people's hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my kid does, too. He'll I walk see. up to you and shake your hand. I see. Maybe you had a German nanny or something. No. I, <laughs> we sent him to Europe for the last four years to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Eric, also, you, you coach a soccer team, so yeah. I know that you really care about kids. So that, that's the proof is in that, that you love to help them uh, be physical. Oh, I think being, you know, being disciplined with a child certainly does not mean that you don't care. I oh. think the other is true. Yeah, it's because you care so much. Oh, we just showed a picture of you with the soccer team. Are you a good coach? Is your team winning? I don't know how good of a coach I am. Yes, we are winning. We are now in the semifinal for the, for the League Cup. Um, how good of a coach I am, I really can't judge that. I mean, as far as success is concerned, maybe the others were more successful. Yeah. As far as instilling certain qualities that are germane to soccer is concerned, I think I'm very good because I've experienced. Mm -hmm. um, germane, is that a German word? Uh, no, no, that is not a German word. That is a, is a French derivative, I think. Yes, I think yes. it is too. Exactly. I, I just happen to have here a soccer ball. And I would love for you to show me some little tricks as we take this break. Can you? I'm told that you can juggle this ball with your feet without ever having to touch it, throwing it up in the air. I'm going to have to touch it with my feet. With your, with but it will not touch the ground. Good should we go over Let's go. You just go to commercial whatever you want, Ron, okay? And Eric? Can you do it first now? What? You want to do it first? I can't do this. You can't do it? No, I can't. Why don't you try uh, juggle it with your feet? Yes. You kick it like that, and then you go like that. See? Yeah, See, I can't do that. Great. Okay, now, how do, you, how do you keep that going? We'll be right back. All right. <laughs> folks, Bosley Bunny here with Dudley's new dippin' egg. This here's no ordinary egg. Inside are all the fixins to color dynamite Easter eggs. Look, Mom, here's how it works. Add coloring crystals to water, dunk a hard-boiled egg, and golly, the colors pop right out at you. So take it from Bosley and turn out some real snazzy eggs. Dudley's new dippin' egg kit comes with six packs of color crystals, four egg holders, and dipper. 
Denver's only unpainted furniture warehouse is having a grand opening sale. Buy direct from the warehouse and save. Take it with you or pay a small delivery charge. Either way, you save money. 60,000 square feet. Everything sale priced. Hurry to the grand opening sale at 5901 North Broadway. The unpainted furniture warehouse is now open to the public seven days a week, every weeknight till 9. Take I-25 North to the 58th Street exit for the grand opening sale of the unpainted furniture warehouse. There's just one place to buy TVs, appliances, and audio. Oh, yeah? Downings. There's just one place with the biggest selection. Oh, yeah? Downings. There's just one place where the prices are low, really low. Oh, yeah? Downings. Look. Save in this 13-inch color portable, $218. In a Mana Radar Range, $298. A Sanyo AM FM portable cassette recorder, $33. For big selection and bigger savings, there's just one place, Downings. Oh, yeah. Sunday at 4, an exciting holiday special with Judy Garland and Fred Astaire, who are a couple of happy hoofers. Be the proudest couple in the Easter parade. So we'll walk up the avenue, yes, we'll walk up the avenue, yes, I'll we'll walk up the avenue. We'll Judy Garland and Fred Astaire in Easter Parade, Sunday at 4 on TV2. Joining our cast from The Young and the Restless is a young and restless actress. I have such a way with words. She portrays Patty Williams, the fastest growing teenager on the show. I think she, well, oh, in this scene, you can see the problems she had. clear that you would be 18 soon and that I would no longer be involved in anything that the two of you did. Please welcome Lily Beth Stern. <laughs> Are you wearing here? Isn't that you? the most depressing scene? Yes, Don't you it guys was. just sit home and cry? Oh, Daddy, I just want to be your little girl again. Oh, Daddy. Yes. This, what are you wearing? What They're is They're called this? leotards, warm-ups, <laughs> dance shoes, and these are just over. Yeah. Over underwear. You, over underwear. you are very <laughs> physically fit. You do that a lot. You, you, I do. You actually teach at the Jane Fonda... Workout. Workout, yeah. On weekends. Uh -huh. so, yeah, as a matter of fact, our producer went to your class. Do you know that? I do know that. And I, well, I didn't know that at the time. And it's a funny story because I'm going away and I really give a hard class. So I'm saying, get those legs up there and get those knees up there. And he's going, and his face is like this and he's just in pain. And he says... Excuse me, are you German? And I said, yes, and get that leg up there. And he goes, you're a Nazi. And I'm going, get that leg. And I went, nobody's ever called me a Nazi before. So he did quite well, I must say. His name is Frank Brill, and you can address your letters to Frank here at the show. It's okay, Frank. <laughs> Wait, anyway, when you started your role of Patty Williams, I'm told that you had to play 16. How, how, how old were you at the time when you started? I was 21. How can a 21-year-old play, how can you relate to that? It was difficult since I was never 16. So it was basically opening my eyes and going, hi, Daddy. And you just skipped 16. 16 growing up? I you did, just... I, 17 <laughs> and 18. Why, how, how were you so unlucky as to miss 16? Because I was in the business since I was nine. And so I was always with oh. older people. Oh, so now uh, you are actually now 21 or something like that? 22. 22. So now you're actually uh, 26 Playing older, or 27. Playing older, now I'm able to play an hour. Right? If you I'm skip 16, 31. you have to skip 21 or 22, right? No. Do you remember your first love scene on the show? It must have been very scary. No, it wasn't for you because you were never 16. My first kissing scene was scary mm. because I didn't know how to kiss. On camera. <laughs> is kissing okay, on camera. Okay, you guys. Is kissing on camera that different? I was 16 and a virgin. What do I know? <laughs> no, it was difficult. You didn't have to tell us that. I'm sorry. You can just say that. You kissing. I meant on the show. I meant Patty Williams was a virgin. So you had to kiss like a virgin. This is getting me into a lot of trouble. Yes, I did. Technically, it was hard. These pants look like a protective device. They are. No. <laughs> Eric, you're going to get it. No, it was very difficult as far as technical wise. Yeah. Uh, it got easier. Because you had to hold back? <laughs> you had to no, hold you back? just had to turn your head maybe to the left or the right. Ask Steve, he knows. It's hard technically on the show. 
Well, I've done love scenes in films. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not a novice. When you first sometimes. start, you're right. It's very awkward. And I mean, you just kiss her. It's very awkward. You're you just kiss her. There's yeah. no big. There's no. It's not a. Uh, you don't have to hold back. No, not if, for example, if they take a long mass or something, then of course it's not that difficult. But if they start, you know, sometimes it becomes very critical. They want I see. to see your eyes here, her eyes on the other side. Mm -hmm. right. I see. So sometimes you get lost in the hair or something. Yeah. There's a sometimes. behind a yellow. So. But, I mean, on soap operas, you do bed scenes. You actually get into bed with people that you barely know, right? I, I did. I right. lost my virginity and turned 18 in one week, about two weeks ago on the show. Did you all see that show? As the character on the show, she sang. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, so they had this bed scene, and it was very unromantic, I must say. I had pantyhose on. That was optional. <laughs> and I had shorts and a tube top. So you were so fully great. dressed. I was under the fully thing. dressed. Well, of course. I mean, what and the guy that plays Jack Abbott, Terry Lester, was so nervous. We were both so nervous <laughs> that he was supposed to crawl up on the bed with champagne. And the, the camera couldn't see his face, but I could. So I'm supposedly under the covers, scared to death of what's going to happen. And he comes crawling up on the bed on his knees, and he spilled the champagne. And as he was spilling the champagne, his face went <laughs> like this. And I started to laugh. And I was supposed to be crying in the scene, and the tears are coming down my face. And I'm hysterically laughing, and he keeps going on with the scene. Well, needless to say, we did it again. <laughs> Am I talking too fast? No. I was enjoying it. Okay. One of the reasons why you are so ready to be on a show like this is because you've had so much experience. She has actually done, Lily Bett has done 100 commercials. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. That is incredible, yeah. really. 100 television 100 commercials. commercials. What was your first one? I did a superior meat commercial. This is a funny story. Uh, I had to eat bologna we'll be the judge. <laughs> all day <Just> long. <laughs> <laughs> well, you ate bologna all day long? All day long on the beach. And I, it was like when I was nine years old. And the reason uh, we had to do that was they were laying out all these hero sandwiches, and it was for this hors d'oeuvre tray. But when I first started going out on interviews, I had seen always that Pearl Drops commercial. Remember that? No. Where the girl runs her tongue across her teeth and she goes, Mmm, it's a great feeling. You know, have you seen that commercial, yeah, Pearl Drops? No. It's um, always on. I, well, I always saw yep. it. So I learned by that commercial. So I would go into interviews and I had heard things. This is when I was nine years old, just got my braces off. And I would never look in the camera because they said, Don't look in the camera. That's what I always thought. So I would be doing a commercial for McDonald's going, mmm, eat McDonald's hamburgers, and I'm going looking off this way, and they're going, look in the camera, and I'm looking off some other direction. So I learned the hard way. I really did. <laughs> Should I be quiet now? You know, you know, don't be quiet. I want you to show us these exercises. Could okay, you show us? I will. Could you take Steve right and Eric and me <laughs> right now. and, and show us how you do? What? what I have you? to take off my shorts. You go take off more? Why? No, I have to take off my shorts. shorts my have to come off. What, these what, have to come off. Absolutely. What do we have to take off? We're fully dressed here. Well, we're okay. <laughs> well, let's go over. Show, show us, show us, guys. Come here. Uh, Victoria, we'll leave you for just a second, okay? I still here with Victoria. Show us how what now we have some music. Show us what how we could get in as good shape as you. All right. I stand now, here. Quick, we have to do, Come quickly. We'll be right back. Go to commercial whenever you have to. What do you do? All right, what you're gonna do is start twisting. Twist. 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 Alright, here we go. Reach it up to the side. Come over and down. Lunchtime, Billy. Lunch. <laughs> An elephant. Zeroni, new from Chef Boyardee. Zeroni? A zoo full of goodness. Nutritious Zeroni. Vitamin enriched pasta. Tomato sauce and cheese. Delicious. With Zeroni's animal shapes, kids love mm. lunch. Then fruit and milk make Zeroni. A tasty, nutritious meal. New Zeroni, with or without meatballs. A zoo full of fun that's good for kids, too. <laughs> Is sinus driving you crazy with congestion, pressure, mean sinus headache? Want more than aspirin or cold capsules? Take a U-turn to Sinutab, extra strength Sinutab. With the most sinus headache pain reliever per dose without a prescription. 54% more per tablet than standard sinus remedies. Helps relieve congestion and pressure too. Take a turn to relief, a U-turn to extra strength Sinutab. The number one selling extra strength sinus pain reliever. When Clairol created a hair setter to take care of your hair, we didn't stop with our easy wind-up rims. 
we didn't stop with our exclusive high energy core. We didn't stop until we created a velvety roller that prevents tangling to leave here in beautifully smooth condition. We didn't stop until we created more than hair setting. We created care setting. Clairol's new custom care setter. It takes care of your hair. Working in this fresh air makes me feel really good. Really thirsty, too. I look to one thing for that thirst. New and improved Nest Tea. Nest Tea's as natural as all outdoors. Because now Nest Tea slow brews its tea just like the sun does for clear, fresh brewed taste and color. If you're looking for natural, sunny tasting iced tea, oh, you're looking at it right now. New slow brewed Nest Tea. There's nothing like it under the sun. What's the video game that has swept this nation by a storm? None other than Pac-Man. And coming up next on Midday, we'll play that game for you with a real Pac-Man master. Also today, we'll preview the upcoming Ice Capade show in Denver with one of that show's Colorado stars. Pat Miller's in the midday kitchen with lamb on her menu, not the governor. And John <laughs> Gillingham continues his exercise for partners on his Tuesday physical minute. I didn't know Pat was a Republican. Well, we'll find oh, out. A bomb threat caused a jetliner to stop here in Denver last night. We'll tell you why and bring you the rest of the news. We also have a couple of sports notes. Kim says seasonal is the weather word for today. Seasonal. 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 That's what Pat Miller does in the kitchen. She on the lamb. Seasonal on the lamb. <laughs> that right. All that and a lot more coming your way live on midday. Don't go away. Sun. You know what you found out today? That one of the reasons why The Young and the Restless is such a good show is because of the many diversified type, right? All these people are very different. Everybody's different. We've had Stephen Ford. Who plays the all-American guy on the show, right? Right. So, right. Can, you mind me this saying month, that? This month. This Mike month. Next week, he may, may rape somebody, but you never know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Victoria Mallory, you're so good on the show. Thank you for joining us thank today. You. Eric Braden, I can't believe what you did with the soccer ball, and and uh, thank you for sharing those ideas with us about raising kids. Right on, brother. And Lily, <laughs> Beth, <laughs> and Lily Beth Stern, you're so good on the show. And thank, thank you for you. the exercise. Thank you. You're uh, goodbye. We'll see you next time. I'll be here next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Davidson's wardrobe provided by Henry Grethel. Pontiac's new four-cylinder front-wheel drive J2000 hatchback. Sleek and streamlined with an impressive list of standard features. An exciting new way to take on a highway in style. Furnished by Pontiac. The MVP microwave oven from Magic Chef. The combination microwave oven vent hood that rises above the problem of where to put it. Furnished by Magic Chef. America Toast. A bright new day. With King's Hawaiian bread. Make cooking easier, clean up quicker. Select quality cookware, bakeware, and electrics with Silverstone, the most durable nonstick ever made by DuPont. I work for the electric company and know about high energy costs. So I got this Hamilton Beach Crock Watcher. Cooks all day for about a dime. The Crock Watcher from Hamilton Beach Scoville. Introducing Arid Spray and Roll-On in a new Baby Fresh scent. Tough on wetness and odor. But Baby Fresh on you. Try new Arid Baby Fresh Spray and Roll-On. This is Jerry Bishop speaking. <laughs>